Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brandon, and in today's video, we're taking a look at Amazon's cheapest welder. This little guy. This is a Safaspi MMA 160 welder. It costs less than a fancy dinner for two. And the company actually reached out to me and asked if I would give an honest review if they sent this to me. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Will it weld? Will it last? Or will it fry itself when I turn the switch on? Let's find out. So out of the box, this thing is pretty impressive. At just six and a half pounds, this thing is super light. You can almost toss it in a backpack. What comes in the box? Well, you have your stinger, ground clamp, you have the welder itself, that's pretty important. You have the 110 to 220 adapter. It comes with five 6013 330 seconds welding rods. You have this little brush with a little uh, chisel on it. You have the a little face mask for protecting your face when you're welding. And then last but not least, you have the user manual. Let's go over the features real quick because this thing packed a punch more than I expected. It runs on both 110 and 220 volts, which is great if you're working in different locations or just using what power you've got. Current ranges go from 20 amps to 160 amps and it adjusts smoothly. On 220, it gives a much better arc and penetration. This isn't just a stick welder. It can also do lift TIG. Now I haven't tried TIG with it yet, but the fact it's even an option at this price point is impressive. For basic hobby TIG, this might be a nice starter. It uses IGBT inverter technology, and it's got some bonus features like hot start, anti-stick, and arc force. I tested those out, we'll get into that in the demo, but in short, it does start arcs quickly, and it didn't stick nearly as often as I expected for a budget stick welder. And like I said, this thing is tiny. It's got a built-in carry handle and barely takes up any space. For mobile repair work, around-the-go repairs, or just tossing it in your truck, this is about as portable as it gets. All right, so the machine's been running nonstop for about 20 minutes now. Um, it's been running the entire time. I kind of fabricated this box up. Uh, my welds are kind of horrible. I, I, my first attempts, I did uh, two passes over the top of each other uh, just because I kept lifting and there's a lot of pitting in there. The vertical, I turned the amperage up just because I wanted to see if I could blow through. Um, I mean, it's still on the lower end of what 6013 can do. Um, that was also the rod that came in the box. So I was welding straight out of the box, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, most welders don't come with rod or anything. So for, for what you pay and what you get is a pretty good deal. Um, it is sticking metal together. The penetration is there. Um, I'm not the best welder. I am a hobby welder. So I'm gonna run 60 or 7018 general this is more of a general purpose this is the most common rod you're going to find uh the machine says it can run it so let's run it i'm going to go right over the top of this vertical weld and then uh i'll do a, a clean one right at the bottom maybe um all depends i tripped the, uh, the circuit breaker on the first attempt i tried sticking the rod um that's a big thing for me i don't stick weld that much so sticking the rod and having the rod like glow bright red, uh, it, you know, just because it's cooking uh, is a big thing for me right now until I get more in practice. Uh, for whatever reason, I could not uh, get it to stick. 
uh, this machine would not let me stick it. So the anti-stick, I guess, is a thing. I, I've never heard of it before, but it is a thing. The hot start, the minute I get real close to the metal, the workpiece, this thing lights up. I don't even have to strike it, which is pretty cool. So 7018, let's see what it does. Seven eighteen does not want to light. It ain't like in 7018. up on 7018 it does not like to strike off once it does strike off it does not want to hold it just sticks as soon as it can welds great with the 6013 that it came with that might be just the rod that this machine needs to weld i don't know i mean that's all of my attempts for striking off the 7018 which runs fine on my other welder over there so i don't know this is hobart uh, a welding rod that I bought from Tractor Supply. It's dry. Um, that's the 6013 rod that comes in the kit. As you can tell, uh, you know, that just broke off, but it was stuck. Yeah, I don't know. So it could be my fault. I don't weld very much stick welding. I am a MIG and flux core welder. Uh, that's what I do the most, but I figured I'd give it a chance. It did stick it together. It did kind of fabricate the small little like start to a box, I guess. Um, I'll probably wire wheel it, clean it up with my MIG welder when I actually go to finish it. All right, so let's talk about what I like and what I don't like. 
starting with what I like. It's crazy affordable, it's dual voltage, it's portable, it's simple to use, you literally just plug it in, it registers whether it's 110 or 220, you set your amps and you start welding. Let's talk about what I don't like. The ground clamp and stinger are pretty much what you would expect at this price point. They're not the greatest, but they're not the worst. They work. When I first struck up, it did trip my breaker. I did have to go reset that. I don't know if that was my fault or if it was the machine's fault, but that was an issue. And the last thing I don't like, there's no TIG torch included. They say you can lift TIG, but I would like to at least have that as an option in the box for me to try. So, is this a FOSB MMA 160 worth it? Honestly, if you have under $100 and you're looking for a cheap welder to get the job done, or you're new and you're looking for a welder that you can practice with without breaking the bank, honestly, yeah. It's not a professional welder, it works, and that alone sets it apart from other gear on Amazon. So if you want something that's cheap and ultra portable, I'll drop a link in the description below and you can check this out for yourself. Thanks for watching. If you've gotten anything out of this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for more content like this one, maybe even some more fabrication projects, maybe even some fouls along the way. I'll catch you guys in the next one.